Hey guys, welcome back. In this uh, video, we're gonna explore the ECU pinouts. And uh, we're coming to you from beautiful Big Bend. A little hard to see right here because we're in the campsite, but um, man, what a, what a cool place. And here's Snowshoe set up, taking in some of the uh, desert sun. On the picnic tables, they have uh, Beware of Javelina, which is pretty cool. They uh, cruise around the campgrounds and around Big Bend wreaking havoc. <laughs> no, they're like the cutest things in the world. So here's our harness again. I have it laid out similar to how we did the other day in the last episode. Um, so we've got the uh, engine connector, identified wires, the stuff all over here goes to the engine bay and this stuff on this side is going to end up with the ECU but it's it's um, separated similar to how we were looking at it the other day. So I think the best way to do this is to keep in your mind the engine bay side right here and the ECU side. All of this. So including the relays, diagnostic connectors, all this stuff. Engine bay side, computer side. We're going to take a look at the ECU pinout, pin by pin. And um, I'm actually going to go sit in the shade because it's quite hot. <laughs> and uh, we will, uh, I'll reference what each thing goes to. And, and we'll try and do the video like that. Here's a close-up shot of the uh, connector for this 1996 um, harness that we're working on. And let's just start at the first couple items here. We have the uh, crankshaft position sensor. So that includes three wires, pins 8, 29, and 54. And then we have the camshaft position sensor. And that's pins 2, 28, and 54. Let's go take a look at where those go in the engine bay. So the camshaft and crankshaft position sensors connect into this connector here. And it's a separate connector from these engine connectors. It's smaller, it's only six pin. Next up, we have mass airflow sensor. Pin 5, 57, and 53. Throttle position sensor. Pin 6, 21, and 20. We have the front oxygen sensor. 23 and 56. And we have the rear oxygen sensor. And that's 24 and 56. And we have the engine coolant temperature sensor. And that's pin 22. And we're going to take a look at where these all connect in. So here we have the mass airflow sensor. The throttle position sensor goes into the engine connectors here. And the front and rear oxygen sensors. Now on these items, we don't actually have to do anything. We just leave these alone. We don't have to do any sort of splicing. Next up, we've got the um, vehicle speed sensor. And this is covered in the last video where we identified anything with these check marks. These are things that we've identified in the last video. The vehicle speed sensor just needs to be connected to a VSS um, sensor of some sort. And all the vehicle speed sensor does is tell the computer how fast the uh, vehicle's traveling. A VSS isn't needed on a 90 to 95 ECU, but 96 plus it's definitely needed. And it'll also help the uh, engine run a little more smoothly on that first generation as well. 90 to 95. Then we have the starter switch, and that just needs to have signal from the starter solenoid in the vanigans, in the black box, in the barrel connector. There is a uh, connection for the starter signal wire, so you can just splice it into that. 
on the buses, we need to actually uh, splice this into the wire that goes to the top of the uh, starter solenoid. So I just usually just splice those two wires together and then plug it into the top of the solenoid. The AC switch was covered in the last video. Um, basically, it will idle the engine up if it senses that uh, the switch is turned on. And um, that's great for if you have accessories that take a lot of draw like uh, big lights or if you wanted to power a fridge or something like that and you wanted it to have a really like solid idle it'll it'll add two or three hundred rpm to the uh to the idle speed which will uh compensate for the big draw on the alternator next we have the ignition switch and this guy actually needs to plug into the ignition source so from the key when you turn the key to ignition on this needs to trigger so it needs to sense that we have voltage when the ignition is turned to on so i'll show you that and we have pin 85 here which is the ignition switch this yellow wire we follow it and we see that it uh, goes toward the engine connectors They're here one lead goes toward the actual engine connectors but then the other lead comes back here and it's teed off and I kept a little lead on it so that we can solder or crimp a connection uh, to the actual ignition source so the wire from the key starting on the second page we have neutral position switch both for uh, manual and automatic transmissions and that's pin 82 we identified this guy in the uh, last video and what we can do with this is we can either leave it clipped or we some people suggest just wiring it to the starter solenoid wire the one that that goes and meets up with the starter switch uh, however that's going to give a 12 volt signal and as you can see over here it requires you know about five volts max at least on this sheet so what i like to do is actually use one of these um, voltage regulators used these in the past but most of the time I just um, leave it disconnected you'll get an engine code but it doesn't affect performance so if you want you can go this direction get a, a little 5 volt voltage regulator so it'll take the 12 volts from the starter switch and change it into 5 volts specifically for this neutral position switch signal and all the computer is looking for is an occasional signal from the switch saying, hey, I'm in neutral. Um, another thing, you could wire it to backup lights um, or an actual neutral position switch. So uh, leave that one to your discretion. But generally, I leave it disconnected. Next, we have the test mode connector. And this is just to put the ECU into test mode. It's the green connectors, and uh, that's to test your radiator fans, your um, various sensors in the engine, test your fuel pump, etc. The NOx sensor goes to the engine connectors, that's pins 3 and 56. And we have ATMT identification, so that's your transmission identification. On the manual transmission, what we're going to do is ground it. So if you're putting this into a manual transmission car, Volkswagen, just ground this pin. If you took this ECU and harness from a automatic transmission car, this pin won't be here. I mean, you won't have a cable coming out of pin 81. It'll just be empty. So you'll need to pull a pin from the ECU that's not being used, we'll find one later, and put it into this spot and then ground it. That will, that will uh, basically tell 
the computer that it is now a manual transmission uh, ECU. Backup power supply, pin 39. Let's take a look here. It's this red, and if we follow this red, it gets to this large gauge red cable. And we keep following it around, and it tees into one a loose end, which will tie into the battery connection. So this needs 12 volts and also to the relays this is what provides the relays with their battery power so the fuel pump relay and the main ignition relay and then it also goes out to the obd2 connector but i don't like this connection I'll, and i'll tell you why in just a little when we get to this guy